Welcome back everyone, it's Grace and in this video what I want us to do is to first do some bug fixes that we have now in our website. So the first one that we are going to fix is our search. So right now a user can actually search for something but then you notice that it always returns one result. So however much the results we have, the UI will always update with one. So we'll fix that. Another thing is we'll add the dynamic currency because we that the user added in their preferences because we've worked on that before. So another thing that we'll do is when you're editing an expense, the date is not quite preferred. So when a user tries to save with, without adding a date, which we should have actually because the user had, has added it before, you notice that we get an error. So we will also fix that one. Then we will go ahead and add some logged in user information to the navigation just so they can know who they are logged in as. Okay, so let's just get started by fixing our search. When a user comes to the search, and they type in like insurance, you can see that we always give them one result, which is not what we want. So the problem is right here, when we are making an API call, so when we get what the user has typed and then we are making an API call, the problem is we are not clearing out the previous, the previous data. Okay, so when we get data, basically we append it to, to like the the element without getting the previous one. So what we're going to first do now is here where we make the API call, we want to first clear out everything in the T body for our results. So we're gonna do in HTML, then we set it to an empty string. Okay, so once we get the data, then we want to be appending the rows. So here we can say plus equals then the T row. So for, for each of these T rows, we're going to be appending one by one to our T body depending on the results that we get. Okay, so let's test it out. So right here, if I come and put insurance, you can see that now it filters by insurance. If I search by test, you can see that we get test. If I search by money, you can see that our results keep getting filtered by those money values. So also, if we search by like date, let's say we put like zero or like five, Session. Okay, let's say we search by like here, like bro. Okay, so you see we get a result. And regardless, so in Django we use the i i contains filter. So you can see it can search everywhere regardless of the of the case of the strings, which is pretty good. And then we can even search by the dates. So you can search by five like an expense we recorded on sixth or fifth or fourth so yeah now the search now the search is working as you can see so the only thing we are going to do before we leave let's just uh, update this currency okay so this is the index view of the expenses so if we come back to our views.py right here so where we have the index basically what we could do here is query the database for the currency of the user so you know now we have this preference model. Let me just bring it up. And if you look at the model, we have this user preference and then it has a currency. So in the views.py, we are going to query for the currency. So currency equals user preference objects dot get. Then we are going to get by the user who is going to be, so we are going to get by the user who is the current logged in user and then we want the currency okay so let's import it so from preferences actually I think it's called user preferences dot models import user preference okay so this gives us the the preference the currency preference so now we can send it to our template so let's add it in our context and then we send it. Okay, so right here, this sends it to our, our template. So in the template, actually our import is complaining. So let me first fix it a bit. Okay, so this can, can easily fix it like this. Okay, so in our template index.html, so you see our templates, expenses, index HTML, right here where we have currency, right here, 
now we can put our dynamic currency which is currency okay so let's reload session is updating so let me let me find it okay this is the search output so actually in the search output you are going to need another way to bring it in because we can send it from uh, actually true we can keep it here so when a user is searching you can see that it's it changes okay but then i want to wrap it into these these cycles just so it looks a little bit better okay let's reload let's try to search then you can see that the currency is there so let's also put it right here okay let's test it out so you see by default it is there so if we come in here and change it to like usd or maybe zaf then save you can see that changes are saved so when you come back around you can see that now it updates to zaf okay so that's all and good so the next thing we are, the next thing we are going to do is now add some user details on the on the navigation so if you go to our base.html which should be in your templates you will notice that we have the form this is the logout form so also you notice that we have uh, the search bar which we i'm going to remove because we don't really need it so in the in the ur right here i'm going to add another another li it will contain an anchor so this one i'm going to give it a class of nav link because i want it to pick up some styles if a variable so this mainly would be the one to go to our profile page so for the href i'm gonna keep it now by default because we don't have a profile page so right here i'm going to bring in the the username which we can get from okay, so we can get the username from request dot user dot username then you can see that we have root over there Oh, so this should be class. Oh my God, sorry guys. So let's reload. You can see that we have the class. So I'm going to wrap it into these squiggly brackets, onto these brackets. <laughs> they are not squiggly. And then for some reason, it's coming on top. So what we would want to is to have it on the left. So right here, I'm going to use, I'm going to write some custom CSS just to have it there. So on this UL, I'm going to just add an inline style so I'm going to give it a display of flex. Then I'm going to give it a flex direction of row, just so it's on one row. Then I'm going to align item center. So let's see what we got. So right now you see that it moves to the left. So now we can now style the, the sign out button. So about the sign up sign out button, I'm going to give it a style here. Actually, I'm going to give it some bootstrap classes. So I'm going to push it from the top a bit. So empty. I'm going to push it by two. Then we don't need this, of course. Let's reload. You can see it moves down a bit, but I want it to go further down. So let's check three. Okay, it looks good. So on the left, we also need to leave some space. So ML left. Let's leave two. So if we reload, yeah, looking good. So you can see that that one is. Is set up so okay so the next thing you're going to have to fix is when you go to our edit page and then try to save this without editing the date you see that we get an error to fix this we are going to need to provide a value here if we go to our template or edit you notice that the input type is dead but then we are not passing a value so the value basically will be the previous the value of the current expense so we can pass it in by giving the value property or the value attribute and then right here we need to put the value so to get the value we can get it from values dot date this here alone will not be this here alone will not actually work so that's because the input expects a certain format so right now if i save this and then came back to the website if we reload and try to save you still can see that it's failing and that's because we need to format it in a way that we'll be able to pass so for us to format it we are going to use this date filter so right here, I'm going to pass in a filter for date. 
So the filter now here I can take in a format. This will be year, month, then date. So once we save that, then come back to our app. If we reload, you can see that we have a date preferred. Very good. So now we, when we save, you can see that it saves, which is good. So now that that's done, we have actually fixed most of the bugs that we had earlier. So in the next one, I'm going to be building out some chat functionality and then also the income crud stuff. So if this video helped you, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel so you can get notifications when we post new videos. I'll see you guys in the next one.